let's uh, let's close it out. Give some due to some people that deserve it. They played a great game yesterday against Texas. The K State women are. I don't know if the AP Bowl can deny them this week to be in the top 10, so they're going to be in there. They're now 5-0 and to start Big 12 play. They got a big win yesterday at home over number 10 Texas, which, look, I, I anybody that has listened to me for however long knows that I'm really big on backing up wins with another win, and this was a massive week for them. They had all this hype, and everybody was putting a lot of emphasis on they were going to play two home games. They took care of Oklahoma, an inferior team, and then a Texas team that I know that they were down, one of their best players. But that's still a team that on paper should have more talent than K-State and has a lot of things going for them. And K-State, even when they got down a couple possessions and you thought, oh, here we go. I, Chris Nelson, I think maybe 10 times thought that it was over for K-State there. Uh, the Cats fought back. They they won hey, the second half and they Nelly won. Nelly the makes game. you look at like one of the most positive people in the world. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, I, he, it makes me look like man. This guy, he's really he's really friendly to everybody. Uh, that massive win for them yesterday against Texas. They're now five and zero, uh, and they get ready for two games this week at TCU on Wednesday, and then Saturday they are at home against KU before the men play Oklahoma State. So the women tip off at one. And then the men go later in the evening, I think uh, six o'clock or so uh, that I, I have been informed that I will be attending both games on Saturday. Uh, yeah. That, that we got a call a couple of weeks ago and my mother-in-law was like, I bought tickets. Uh, are you guys going? It's like, well, I guess we'll figure out a way to get a five month old to go to Manhattan and, she might have to take in two games on Saturday too. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. Uh, but I wanted to give a shout out to the K-State women because I think a lot of people have been watching more than a usual amount. Obviously, it helps that they're good. But, you know, kind of a pack mentality. Everybody has kind of geared in and locked in a little bit more. And they are genuinely genuinely fun to watch. And I say that as somebody that, I mean, look, I I like Jeff Mitty. I think he's a fine guy. but I want to smack him in the face sometimes when I see his team shooting 29% from three on the season. Like, get you some shooters. That's how you win games, Jeff. But they're finding a way to do it because they're awesome defensively and they have one of the best players in the country in Aoka Lee. So I uh, wanted to give them a shout-out and give them their due and, and see what thoughts you guys had on the K-State women for uh, their awesome start. I mean, they are officially in the driver's seat to be the Big 12 champs this year. I know there's a lot of games left to get it sorted out, but – the fact that they've shown up in massive games this year against Iowa in one on the road, and then Texas comes to town and you beat them, and you've already beat some other ranked teams on your schedule uh, throughout. Like th this is this team is legit right now, and they're going to give K State an opportunity to have something to be really excited about. So shout out to the K State women. Yeah, they they're legitimate national title contenders, which is I, I guess I don't want to say crazy to say at a school like K State, but like it's crazy to think that like they are that good. Like they, if especially they go two and oh this week, they're definitely in the driver's seat to at least win the big 12. And it's, it, they're fun to watch. I mean, I, I've watched probably half of their games and they, I mean, they, they play very, very good defense that Texas, that Texas team, I think averages like, close or above 80 points per game and case it held them down to 58. So they, they get it done. They're fun because of the whole gap goat thing and holding up the goat <laughs> like that. Everything about them is fun and they just keep winning and they keep finding ways to win. Yeah. Aoka Lee, the only person at K-State that we've seen put up the efficiency numbers is Michael Beasley. In, in her realm. I mean, she's 1.37 efficiency, which is just ridiculous. Her per player efficiency rating is 47. Uh, Michael Beasley's was 39.8. Um, and those are pretty comparable given possessions. Those are pretty comparable numbers. Michael, efficient, Michael Beasley's efficiency was 1.20. Aoka Lee's is 1.37. Uh, Aoka Lee scores 43 points per 100 possessions. Michael Beasley scored 46. So just unreal efficiency numbers for Ilka Lee um, and enough guard play um, around them that 
they, they can be that Big 12 champion type defender, maybe the Final Four defender. I do think the key for them will be, Mason, you've brought it up multiple times, but the three-point shooting, um, they're, they're going to have to be more like a 33, 34, 35% team, not a 30% team if they want to go uh, to the heights K-State women basketball has never seen, which is getting to an Elite Eight, Final Four type situation. We've won some Big 12s with the ladies, which is which is something this team can, I think, match if they play to their potential. Uh, right now, K-State is shooting over 31% from three. Um, I'm going back to compile this to make sure that I have the uh, right numbers. That would be the best three-point shooting season for the K-State women since 2017 when they shot 33%. They have – and. Three of the last four, four of the last five, they've been under 30% for the season. So they they do not shoot it well, typically. Uh, and so it's that is going to be a, a question. You think about yesterday's game, like some of the keys for them is you give credit to, I mean, Zayana Walker hit a big three at the end of the third quarter that gave them the lead in the middle of a big run. So like getting that was huge. Glenn hit some big threes for them that – well, she hit two of them, <laughs> but they were both, they both felt big. I think anytime I see the K-State women make a three, I go, that's big because they normally don't get those. Like they, they made the shots they needed and then they let their defense. I mean, Texas has been like an all world offense this year in terms of the rest of the country. And I think they were averaging over 80 points. K-State held them to 58 points yesterday. They shot 20, they missed 40 shots yesterday. They were 22 of 62. They only made two threes. Like, they were really, really good where they needed to be yesterday. And uh, now, I mean, 17 and 1 and 5 and 0, oh, especially when you think of the fact that in their non conference, the K State women played three ranked teams, and two of them were Iowa, both <laughs> times a top five team. Uh, and, and you go two and one against those top 20 opponents you faced, and then they've killed basically everybody else. And what did we just talk about with the K State men against Oklahoma State versus Baylor? It's the K-State women, not only are they just beating the bad teams on their schedule, they are they are beating them down every single night. You're not playing with fire. I mean, the, their closest game that they've played recently was 16 and 17 points and wins against UCF and Oklahoma. And it's like, those are what close games have been for them until they faced a good team like Texas. So they are the real deal right now. They're a lot of fun. And uh, I, I am looking forward to going and seeing them against KU this weekend which like I'm not too shy to admit like that will be the first KU women's K-State women's basketball game that I've intentionally intended attended since my freshman year of college when K-State uh, I guess I went to a K-State Iowa State game my sophomore year on my own volition but I went to the K-State UConn game my freshman year and that was that was an awesome experience and they played well I think they only got beat by like 25 <laughs> which that that version of UConn that was like winning the game. You go, yeah. man, you you played a tight one with these guys. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to it because they they are fun right now, and uh, like I said, they are doing it despite the fact that I'm going to throw up every time I see them shoot a three. But everything else is going to look really really good out there.